Southampton, and this is Ben's Side Story. My name's Chloe Sansom, I'm uh, 23 years of age. I uh, played at Mill last year and property manager. I started for a boys team when I was four, then stayed at, stayed at the boys team until I was 12, which was the age that you then had to leave um, back then. Left at 12, went to Dorset to play for the county, then Dorset folded, so I then moved to Hampshire. It was there until I was 15, then finished school and went from Hampshire to Redden. Um, so I got approached by Kelly and asked if I would go to Reading and go to JMO. I was at the college for two years. I made the first team in my second year. Went to the university, so I went to Buckinghamshire New, New University. But in my second year, I decided to leave Reading and go to Brighton. I was just looking at the opportunity to play the most amount of football. So yeah, it paid off. Um, I said it paid off because I got my first England call up at Reading. Um, to be honest, it was a massive shock. Um, it was kind of, it was something that was definitely not planned. Um, at the time, we were kind of, I was com completely just focusing on football. Finding out at first, it was kind of myself and Liam. We spoke about it, and it was kind of, is it right? Is it wrong? Is it the right time? And to be honest, it was hard, but we always said, is there ever a right time? We were thinking about so many changes. Um, obviously, how much it would change, not only my lifestyle, but his lifestyle and everything else. To be honest, now he's here, I would never look back. Um, as, as much as it has changed things, it's, I think it's made us both grow up. It, it got to a point where my parents said that I'd never go back, so I even had a bet with them that I'd make it back to football. It was, it was hard and there was a lot of like, sleepless nights thinking about it. Um, but no, definitely one that I'd never change now, because we told our parents on Mother's Day. <laughs> um, to, to my parents, it was a massive shock, obviously, because they were very football orientated for me, um, and obviously my career with football. Um, Liam's parents over the moon. Don't get me wrong, my parents were over the moon in the long run, um, and they loved them to bits. But obviously, it, initially, it was a massive shock. It was for both of us, really. So, but wouldn't change it for anything now. Um, but no, obviously, going into tell football was. It was hard, um, and one that I didn't really know what their reactions were going to be like. Um, I don't know, but I think maybe that's what made me put it off for like a week or two. But it was one of those things that I didn't tell the girls until after the session. Um, so I had the conversation with the coaches before the session. I think his first response to me was, right. <laughs> um, and I was like, okay, <laughs> don't want me to say anything else? Or? Chris was like, I've spoken to the FA and you know, longer than I have to train. <laughs> Because it was part, they don't allow people to play past 12 weeks. And you were? About 24. <laughs> <laughs> I went out to do uh, limited <laughs> stuff that session. Um, and then they kept cutting it because I was standing in goal, but obviously they weren't allowed to shoot against me. Um, so he, obviously Chris at the time, kept cutting the session and was like, stop shooting. So obviously the girls were getting quite frustrated, so obviously I had to tell them at the end of the session. Oh, they were so excited. Oh, am I missing football? Yeah, massively. Um, especially watching it on TV and stuff. Um, and with so many of the games being shown on TV and obviously the only FA um, player, massively missing it. And obviously going down to see the girls the other day. Um, it was nice to see them and nice to catch up, um, but missing the environment definitely. Wanting to take part so much, but obviously physically not being allowed. <laughs> It sounds really bad, but it's quite deflating sometimes because you think like you've played football for so long and you've been to so many like games and stuff. They're only like they're now getting to the stage that they're being played at big stadiums. Like I feel like I've missed out on that, but there's always gonna be another time. I'm I'm not missing work. I get bored sat inside. I'm not one of these people that can sit in four walls. To be honest, it's more of me going out and spending money, which probably isn't the, the best of best of things. But <laughs> it's sorry. Oh, he's brilliant. Yeah, can't complain. I mean, last night he went down at half ten, didn't wake up until I woke him up about five minutes ago. So. <laughs> well, it's a little bit difficult because I support Chelsea and Liverpool sports Newcastle. So, um, no, if I had my way, he'd be in a, uh, a Chelsea kit. But I think if his granddad had his own way as well, he'd be in a United shirt. 
So here be here be playing football. No you don't. Um well both me and Liam are keepers, so you never know. You never know, but he'll do what he wants, bless him. If he wants to play football, he'll play football. So I'm hoping to be on the way to getting back to full fitness come January. Um, so then obviously come pre season it'll be I'm kind of there, ready to ready to go back in kind of thing. Did you ever feel that clubs wouldn't want you or clubs wouldn't know who you are when it's time to come back into football? I definitely felt like um, clubs would definitely forget you. Um, it was a case of not would I ever make the way back, but would I ever get to the level that I was at because of clubs thinking, well, you've had the season out, um, you've obviously had a little one and um, and that obviously changes a lot. But if I was there before and if I could get back to that level or even better, then to me there's no reason why clubs wouldn't because as much as it will be hard to get back into the kind of um, the setup and, and where everything is now, um, I understand that obviously clubs are very settled in their squads and stuff like this, but if I personally have a determination then I don't understand, don't see why, why not really. Don't get me wrong, it was always, it's always a thought in my mind of will I ever get back to a squad and will I ever be wanted in a squad again? I don't think there's any reason why not to be honest. You don't ever see it in men's football because obviously it's not kind of a massive thing, but um, no, I definitely, definitely don't see any reason why not. But. I don't think there is. I think you take a season out, it's only the same as a player for, for 12 months if you do an ACL or... Yeah, of course, yeah. It's the same, just having... Yeah, definitely. If, if you look at it like that, then it's, it's exactly the same. The decision to take a year out probably kind of give me kind of that excitement to go back even more because I've missed it for so long. Um, I think it was kind of my independent time like the weekend trips away and stuff like that, it's kind of, it's not a mini holiday, but <laughs> it's one of those things that you have to experience in football to get the real kind of real vibe out of football. And the cold nights of football um, were horrendous at times, but I think that's what makes it, makes it football. I definitely feel like, especially women in football, don't feel like they can kind of go through the whole pregnancy and, and having a little one because I feel like a lot of people think that when they have a little one then it's the end of their career. As much as I haven't made the way back yet, I know full well I will. But I don't feel people should be kind of held back by it. As much as it was a massive shock to us and a massive shock to me personally, I definitely won't let it hold me back from, from getting back into football and, and getting back to doing what I was doing and what I love really. So as much as I love him to bits, <laughs> he won't he won't hold me back. Bless him. He'd come and, and he'd be there, so 